Hey everyone, uh, in this video, let's talk about what exactly the zero click hacks are, what exactly the zero click attacks are, right? So few days back, I basically came across this nice blog post. Uh, so we'll talk about this blog post. This is basically about like how agentic IDs such as cursors or Claude or a Grok AI or the agents that we are using these days can amplify such attack. But before we dive in into this blog post and into more details around this, let's first try and understand what exactly the zero click attacks are. So as the name implies, zero click attack is a form of cyber attack where a kind of a vulnerability is installed onto your device without you doing anything. Right. So it's, it's, it's very different from a conventional form of attack wherein you had to do something like, you know, you had to click a link or you had to download an image or you had to basically perform some action. But zero click attack or zero click hacks do not require you to do anything. Right. So let's take some of the examples of very famous zero click attacks or zero click hacks that had happened in past. So the first one that we uh, need to talk about is something called stage fright. So stage fright is a kind of a bug which basically came up uh, in 2015. And this is this this is basically this infected uh, Android operating system, right? So it's a kind of a operating system level uh, vulnerability which came up and it is believed to have infected around 950 million devices, right? So this is just the data, but it, it is still still very huge, right? And the whole idea of the stage fright boils down to something called RCE, which means something that is remote code execution, right? So there is something called remote code execution, wherein some code is basically injected to the target device uh, and that code is kind of remotely executed. So in this case, what actually happened, the attacker or the bad player, what they did was they basically sent the MMS containing uh, the malicious code. And as soon as the device received this, that MMS, by default, your device also, you know, execute or, you know, perform some default operation uh, in such thing. For example, uh, they have to create a preview, for example, for the MMS, right? So that happens uh, automatically without you doing anything as soon as you receive an SMS. Or, for example, let's say as soon as you receive an image, an automatic preview is created in chat applications, etc. right? So the same thing was exploited wherein MMS is sent to a device, a target device, and that MMS basically contain the code that is directly executed and basically, uh, you know, increase the privileges for the uh, hacker or a malicious user. And then that uh, malicious user can basically uh, does all of the uh, like hack into all, all sort of information inside your device. So that was the first one stage right now. The second one is Pegasus, and this one is very, very famous, right? You must have heard about it. There was a lot of political uproar around this Pegasus spyware, right? So the first version of it came up in 2019, and it is believed to have infected the WhatsApp, right? So WhatsApp is basically a messaging platform which is used worldwide to share or to, uh, you know, to do things like uh, chatting or to things like voice call, the video call, etc. Right now, this Pegasus, this is the kind of a spyware, right? So it's it's not a bug, but it's a spyware which basically uh, harnesses or exploits a bug inside a WhatsApp, right? So it basically exploit a voice over IP calling feature inside a WhatsApp. So what actually happened was the WhatsApp so whenever you receive a call, for example, right? So there are a few things which happen by default. So for example, let's say identifying who is calling, right? Identifying the number or let's say uh, 
starting a ring for a ring of the phone right so those are the things which happens implicitly automatically as soon as you receive a call on whatsapp and that same thing was exploited right over here wherein there was a buffer which was a memory buffer which was used for this uh, voice call so what they did was they basically over loaded this buffer with lot of malicious packets that were sent uh, during this uh, audio call right so this is by where basically does not even require you to receive a call even a miss call can infect your device with the spyware and then this spyware can further uh, starts the uh, chain reaction to download other pieces of software that can uh, basically hack into your camera into your microphone etc right so that was the packages in 2019 now uh, and this is believed to have infected both operating system or both devices both ios and android but in 2021 uh, another version of packages came up wherein it is believed to have infected the i messages inside the iphone right and it exploits the malformed pdf so a malformed pdf was sent through i messages and i messages basically create a preview of that pdf so you are not doing anything that PDF is again being sent by some bad actor and it is received to your device. And to create a preview, your device or a phone executes some code by default, right? So to preview this PDF, a code is being executed and that basically leads to something called RTO or a remote takeover, right? And then it can like uh, take control of everything. Uh, such as camera the microphone the contact list uh, the other stuff on on onto your phone right now this pegasus this is a kind of a spyware which which not only uh, impact the applications but it can also impact the operating system and then once the operating system is affected or once the operating system is uh, infected then the then the applications which are running onto the operating systems, uh, they are also uh, impacted or they get impacted and they can be harnessed to, uh, you know, extract out different information about the user. So that was uh, the kind of zero click attacks that have happened in the past, right? Now, since we are in the world of AI agents and we are using like things like cursor things like cloud etc to create applications right day in and day out so ai basically act as an amplifier for us so you for example you have some sort of task that you want to do and you plug in ai such as cursor in this case let's say now cursor agents what they can do is they can just take in your task and they can quickly execute your task so they act as amplifier but at the same time we know that definitely the cursor is kind of increasing the productivity for us but at the same time it it is also increasing the risk for the attacks right and let's talk about how ai agents can mix in and can amplify this attack a lot right so that is something that we need to discuss and now let's talk about uh, this post around agentic ais so now what this post suggests is that so for example there is a kind of scenario which has been explained so let's discuss that so for example that you are using a cursor ai right and you are interacting through the cursor ai and you are doing some sort of job right now there is this concept of mcp uh, that you have wherein what you can do is you with the cursor you can integrate things like google docs you can integrate things like uh basically the applications which are there right so for example you want to integrate with the gmail right so that can be achieved with the help of something called mcp and mcp allows us to uh, basically execute all sort of commands directly from the ai agents that is cursor so for example 
let's say I want to list down all of my Google Docs. So I can just give that command in the natural language to the cursor and this MCP server will basically help the cursor to interact with the Google Doc, right? And Google Doc will basically return back all the list of documents to the cursor and cursor can basically display them, right? So that is the kind of thing in here. Now imagine a situation, for example, let's say there is a bad actor or a bad a bad player which is uh who is there now what he does is he basically goes and share some malicious document containing some sort of prompt injection or a python script a malicious python script inside the doc right he wrote that malicious script inside the google document and he shares it with you and you do not get any sort of you know a communication or a alert or notification that the document has been shared because that is how uh, that is the that is the kind of option so for example i want to share some document and write in here let's say uh, i'll write i'll call it abc and i want to share it to someone right so i can basically choose to notify or not to notify right so this is an option and if i silently share this document to the to someone and let's say he has set up the mcp server with the cursor and the google doc and he executes the command like list the document or he want to read the document summarize the document uh, then in that case this ai agent this cursor can execute that malicious code coming down from uh, Google Doc directly onto your system leading to a zero click attack or a zero click hack right so let me let me tell you how how this exactly works so let's dive in into uh, an ID so this is a cursor and uh, what I can just do is so for example let's say uh, right for example let's say uh, execute hello world hello world code in python let's say right so now in this case against this prompt we'll get some code and the cursor will ask me to whether i want to execute this code or not right so it's giving me a prompt that uh, the cursor is trying to run this command and now i have to basically allow that okay run this command right but think of a situation where cursor do not provide or do not ask for the permission and it simply executes it right and that can actually happen so for example if i just run this code now uh, in that case you can see the hello world is getting printed but uh, if i do something like for example if you just go like each time uh, to, to just save the time or to increase the productivity sometime what we can do is we can disable this uh, questionnaire right this uh, this prompt right so we don't want to basically uh, answer this prompt each time uh, because of things like you know developer fatigue etc so for example what i can now do is i can simply say uh, let's say a loud list and if i go in here and i can just type in python free and i can also type python simply right so now what i have done is i have basically added python and python 3 inside the command allow list that simply means whenever the cursor requires to execute any python code it will directly execute it without me giving any sort of approval so now for example if we if we do this now let's go and let's simply say write uh, or let's say print print today's date today's date using python let's say so you will actually see that in this case the uh, cursor will directly execute that code because we have given that permission so this kind of thing when you are when you are doing when, when you have done this kind of thing and 
when it is mixed with things like MCP server or you are interacting from the external services wherein uh, things like prompt injections can be done very easily, then you are at a very higher risk of getting uh, a basically this zero click attack or zero click hack. So this was all about it. And uh, so this was all about zero click attack. Now we can talk about something like defenses around it. So if we talk about defenses, so one of the defense could be like guardrails around MCP boundaries. So what we can do is around the MCP server, uh, if you do not know what exactly the MCP server is, so that is nothing but MCP server and it's kind of a protocol, a model context protocol uh, that allow AI agent to access tools, data and capabilities through unified interface. So your AI agent can directly talk to the MCP server such as Google's MCP server, which allow us to interact with the Google Doc, right? So we can basically create guardrails wherein we can scan uh, whatever uh, the prompt that we are getting uh, and we can create those kind of, uh, you know, checks at MCP uh, server itself. Then we should be careful about the command allow list, right? So we should be, uh, we should be continuously monitoring or we should continuously audit about the com this uh, command allow list so that uh, we do not uh, basically allow things like Python because Python can directly help directly execute and basically increase the risk of a zero click attack in this case, right? Then we should also be very careful about file sharing. There should be a protocol that should uh, basically perform these checks uh, wherein, for example, from uh, like, for example, if the, if the Google Doc or let's say a target belongs to some organization there is some person who is working inside the organization then no one from outside should be able to share the file with that particular person so that file sharing uh, can be basically uh, made, made made limited and can be uh, controlled right then for the end user for the user like the device users we can keep our apps and device updated so that uh, we we have the latest uh, code or the latest bug patches uh, which are basically found uh, in the apps and 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 we are not at the risk of uh, attack right so these are kind of things that we can basically have as the defenses against the zero click act so this was all about it 